been so long. They've captured the magic and put it to song. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best songs from Big Mouth. I'm going to change it. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at the catchiest and most outrageous songs from this Netflix animated series. What's your favorite musical number from Big Mouth? Be sure to let us know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. Number 10, Code Switching. What? Are you serious? You don't have one of these? What? You don't have a code switch? No. How does a code switch work? Well, it's a little tricky, but let me break it down for you. Big Mouth has made it very clear that there's no aspect of puberty that it's afraid to touch. Throughout the seasons, however, it's shown that it's equally adept at tackling a wide range of issues and themes. Cause when you're young and black, you develop a knack for putting the world at ease. In season four, a visit to Missy's extended family has her questioning what her racial identity means to her. Devon has some insight to share with her about his experience as one of the few black kids at school. But his lesson in code switching underscores a very real and problematic pressure felt by many people of color. It's called code switching. And I'm a master of the dial. I got a different me for every situation. The song is catchy as hell, and it's easy to get caught up in the fun of it all, but what Devon is describing is also an exhausting way to live. And it's anybody's guess which one is me. Number nine. Who needs a boy? Valentine's Day. It's wonderful. It's 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 a day of hugs and snuggles. A time to spread your loving seeds. In this extra long Valentine's Day special, songwriter Mark Rivers treats fans to an extra large serving of musical fun. Valentine's Day cuts right to the core of the pressure and disappointment so often associated with the holiday. Valentine's Day, Valentine, I can make it through your day. And changes. An alternate version of the show's theme song is one of the most beautiful performances in Big Mouth to date, thanks to Maya Rudolph's incredible voice. He's going to when the credits roll on the episode, though, it's Matthew and Jesse's duet that really stays with you. With some banter from Connie and Maurice, the pair sings an old timey ode to friendship that's sure to ring true with anyone who finds themselves single on Valentine's Day. Who needs a boy? Number eight, life is an effed up mess. Love doesn't last forever, it will die and break your heart. And you can't have a sexual awakening without tearing lives apart. Inspired by the group dance number, The Electric Slide, this song is a whole lot of fun. What makes it such a standout, however, is the jarring contrast between the overall energy and the lyrical content. Life is a tough mess. As Jessie learns on the day of her disastrous bat mitzvah, sometimes there's nothing you can do but laugh in the face of the bad stuff. There's comfort in the chaos when you learn to let go. It's an important lesson, but more importantly, it's one hell of a good time. When your parents fight in front of everyone and you wind up with Coach Steve as your DJ, what else can you do but sing and dance your way through it? Thanks for the pep talk, gang. And it doesn't get any better when you're dead. <laughs> Number seven, everybody bleeds. When the ovum first descends. Big Mouth often uses musical numbers to really hammer home the central theme of an episode. Rarely has this been more true than with Everybody Bleeds, which is both the song and episode title. No, no, you're not alone, cause everybody bleeds. There are few people who can honestly say that getting their first period was a forgettable experience. It's a life event that, unlike so many others, simply cannot be scheduled. In hindsight, it might make for a good story, but in the moment, well, you really hope it doesn't happen on a field trip to the Statue of Liberty. After punching Jay in the throat, Jesse rides the bus home to the tune of a slow jam sung by none other than a tampon. Leave a shameful stain on the white pants of your heart, and everybody bleeds. It's graphic, but it's also extremely relatable. Number six. Cafeteria Girls theme song. Hey, I'm not gonna spaz out if you promise not to sing. Promises are made to be broken. 
Another title song, Cafeteria Girls takes its name from Nick and Andrew's seventh grader romantic interests. She's my best friend. And I'm a little shorter than her. And together, we're, we're making sustained, sustained eye contact, contact with, with you guys. guys. Yeah, we are. Hell yeah. Cafeteria Girls, life is their trade. But here's the thing, boys. They're not just romantic interests. These girls have names, feelings, and desires. <laughs> well, I'm Izzy, Hi. and this is Misha. As it turns out, they even have their very own show, Cafeteria Girls. Big Mouth is a very meta series, so it was only a matter of time until they gave us a show within a show. You guys are literally on our show. What? Uh, Cafeteria Girls? Cafeteria Girls, kissing off the menu. But, who could have predicted that a fake show would have such a catchy and memorable little theme song? Cafeteria Girls is so short we were hesitant to add it to our list, but the theme music becomes a recurring gag throughout the episode, which arguably gives it a leg up on longer songs. Cafeteria Girls, a second helping of friendship. I'm a handful. Number 5. Guy Town. I present to you Guy Town. Jay, this place is a total bummer. Are you kidding me? The bachelor lifestyle is often romanticized. And that's exactly what the divorcees and single dudes of Guy Bilzerian's Guy Town do in this song. All you can do is you please hang your balls in the breeze free of society's uptight gaze. In reality, Guy Town is rundown, sleazy, and altogether gross. But the musical number it inspires is an undeniable hit. We're a lonely dude nation. Get your worlds and embrace the bros in Guy Town. It's got the zany, feel good energy of an 80s or 90s sitcom. But instead of a family frolicking in a park or getting into wacky hijinks in the kitchen, the men of Guy Town are buying personal care products and trimming a suggestive topiary garden. Guy Town is just about the last place you'd want to actually live. But based on this song, yeah, this is a spin off that we would genuinely watch. It's a play of coronation. Lose the ring and live the dream in Guy Town. Number four, Disclosure, the musical. This is the audition for Disclosure the Musical. It is based on the 1994 movie Disclosure, which was not a musical starring Michael Douglas and Demi Moore. It's easy to forget that Disclosure the Movie the Musical was not, in fact, the season three finale. It was just so good. It's finally happening, we've waited so long. They've captured the magic and put it to song. As far as musical episodes go, however, this was the last of the season. And boy, did the Big Mouth songwriter Mark Rivers ever go out on a high note. Between Disclosure and Missy's two separate musical numbers, this episode gives Glee a run for its money. Cause an aggressive woman likes to be on top. The episode opens with Caleb providing an introduction to Bridgeton Middle School's new theater production, a musical adaptation of the 1994 erotic thriller Disclosure. It is a wildly inappropriate choice, but it's hard to argue against the resulting songs and stinging commentary. It's ridiculously exposition heavy and a great parody of high school musicals in general. But you've got the power now. Number three, Sex on a Lady. What if I'm not good at it? Exactly. What am I gonna do? Hit songs come and go, but Sex on a Lady has burned itself into our collective minds. I wanna do Sex on a Lady, but I'm not really sure I can. Coach Steve is a gift to comedy. He's a walking quote machine. Each word that comes out of his mouth is somehow funnier than the last. But when he starts singing, that is when the magic really happens. I'll chew on a hair, I'll lick on a face, then I'll go number three in a lady's place. In this unforgettable season two episode, Coach Steve finally loses his virginity, to Jay's mom, no less. In the lead up to the big moment, Steve and his hormone monster Rick sing about, well, we'll just let them do their thing. I'm gonna do sex on a lady, and that lady's gonna do sex on me. There are a lot of creative ways to describe intercourse, but sex on a lady sets a new bar for hilarity. May we never hear the words make thick ever again. Oh, I'm not gonna stop till I'm through doing sex on a lady! Number two, I love my body. Hot diggity damn. Whoa. Look at this cornucopia of flesh. When one of their classmates begins developing earlier and more obviously than the other girls, Jesse and Missy find themselves suddenly self-conscious about their own bodies. 
One of the biggest ways in which Big Mouth has pushed the envelope is with cartoon nudity. Even so, we were not prepared for this musical number and the sheer amount of animated flesh that would accompany it. God made us in her image and that girl ain't got no shame. Netflix might be able to get away with it, but sadly, we cannot. You'll just have to watch it for yourself. Just because these women are okay with their gross bodies doesn't mean you get to be. Skin parade aside, I Love My Body is just a really, really solid and well-written song. Empowering and reminiscent of I Will Survive. This song is a bop with serious disco vibes. I love the disco vibes of that song and its message. That's a great thing about this show, isn't it? Anyway, we've got a slew of raunchy and catchy songs to get through in the honorable mentions, and then we will crown our top song from Big Mouth. I used to be her favorite. Not many jokes here, just a heartfelt song from a son who feels abandoned. Cause I used to be her favorite. I used to be her favorite. Ooh. The Slut Walk, a great song about sexism and the male gaze. The Spectrum of Sexuality, a magician, ghosts, and a boner hat. What's not to like? Whatever horny predilection makes you a wider prompt erection, it's all there on the spectrum of sexuality. Poop Madness. Take a journey down the rabbit hole into Andrew's gastrointestinal nightmare. Boy, you have boomsy, bloomsy, sweetsy, brownsy, poop madness. <laughs> Oh, God, I do. I really do. Shame. A rocking lesson in self-consciousness from the shame wizard. And fill you with shame, shame. Make it life just a little bit lame. A healthy dose of sweet self-loathing shame. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, totally gay. Being gay can be bloody brilliant. How so, Freddie Mercury? I was hoping you would ask. What's it like to be gay? The show might be called Big Mouth, but the biggest thing here are the personalities. And in the history of music, there have been few figures with a bigger personality than Queen singer Freddie Mercury. Funny Man and director Jordan Peele is credited with Mercury's voice work. But when it comes time to sing, he handed off the mic to vocalist Brendan McCreary for a spot-on impression. When you're gay, every day is a non-stop cabaret. You've got style and flair, you're loved everywhere, except for North Carolina. From the instrumentation to the vocals, if not the lyrics, the resulting number feels perfectly at home in the Queen catalog. It even earned an Emmy nomination. I'm gay, totally gay. I'm a fabulous, flouncing, loud and proud cliche on display. Crass, catchy, and empowering. This song encompasses everything we've come to love about the music of Big Mouth, even if Mercury himself didn't actually identify as gay. Most people thought I was gay, but I'm actually bisexual. If only every sexual identity crisis could be as fun as this one. I'm gay. He's absolutely undeniably gay. Can we just give one more shout out to the insane Freddie Mercury impression in that song? If I didn't know better, I would have sworn it was him. So, how did we do? What other songs do you think are catchy, also a great parody, but also have a great message? Be sure to let us know in the comments, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton, or on my YouTube channel. See ya. Absolutely undeniable.